Welcome to another video in our Legend and Legacy series. In this video we'll be taking a deep dive into the life and legacy of James Charles Rogers, better known as Jimmy Rogers. He is often referred to as the father of country music. Rogers was a talented singer-songwriter and musician who rose to fame in the late 1920s. His unique rhythmic yodeling style set him apart from other musicians of his era and earned him the nickname the Blue Yodeler. Despite never performing in concert, Rogers made a name for himself through his early country music recordings, which continue to inspire artists today. In this video, we'll explore his impact on both country music and the blues, and look at how he has influenced countless musicians over the years. So, sit back, relax, and join us as we celebrate the life of Jimmy Rogers. Before we begin, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss a single one of our upcoming videos. Jimmy Rogers was born on September 8, 1897. He was born to railroad foreman Aaron Rogers and his wife, Eliza Bozeman. Jimmy's affinity for entertainment was evident from an early age. By age 13, he had twice organized and begun traveling shows, but his father brought him home both times. Rogers' father found him his first job working on the railroad as a water boy. Here, he was further taught to pick and strum by rail workers and hobos. As a water boy, he would have been exposed to the work chants of the African-American railroad workers, known as Gandhi dancers. A few years later, he became a brakeman on the New Orleans and Northeastern Railroad, a position formerly held by his oldest brother, Walter, who had been promoted to conductor on the line running between Meridian and New Orleans. In 1924, at the age of 27, Rogers was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which temporarily ended his railroad career. He took this opportunity to get back into the entertainment industry and organized a traveling roadshow. He performed across the southeastern United States until he was forced to return home after a cyclone destroyed his tent. He returned to railroad work as a brakeman in Miami, Florida, but eventually lost his job due to his illness. Rogers relocated to Tucson, Arizona, and was employed as a switchman by the Southern Pacific Railroad. He kept this job for less than a year, and the Rogers family, which by then included wife Carrie and daughter Anita, settled back in Meridian in early 1927. Later that year, Rogers decided to travel to Asheville, North Carolina, where he performed for the first time on WWNC, Asheville's first radio station, with Otis Kuykendall. A few months later, Rogers recruited a group from Bristol, Tennessee, called the Teneva Ramblers, and secured a weekly slot on the station as the Jimmy Rogers Entertainers. In late July 1927, Rogers' bandmates learned that Ralph Peer, a representative of the Victor Talking Machine Company, was coming to Bristol to hold an audition for local musicians, later to become known as the Bristol Sessions. Rogers and the group arrived in Bristol on August 3, 1927, and auditioned for Peer in an empty warehouse. Peer agreed to record them the next day, but the band dissolved due to an argument over how they would be billed on the record. Rogers arrived at the recording session the next morning alone and completed his first session for Victor in Bristol. The recordings were released on October 7, earning modest success. In November, Rogers headed to New York City to arrange another session with Peer. Rogers requested that his sister-in-law, Elsie McWilliams, a musician, help him write some songs. She would become his most frequent songwriting partner, writing or co-writing nearly 40 songs for Rogers. Rogers recorded four more sides, including Blue Yodel, which featured a yodel he claimed to have learned after he caught a troop of Swiss emissaries doing a demonstration at a church. In the next two years, this recording sold nearly half a million copies, rocketing Rogers to stardom. In May 1933, Rogers traveled to New York City to record what would be his final sessions for Victor Records. Although he was quite ill, he managed to record four more songs, including Mississippi Delta Blues and Years Ago. Despite his declining health, Rogers continued to tour and record until the end of 1933. On May 17, 1933, he performed for the last time on the radio program The Texaco Star Theater. 
His health had deteriorated to the point where he had difficulty standing and had to sit in a chair during the performance. He returned to his hotel room and died two days later on May 26, 1933, at the age of 35. Jimmy Rogers' influence on music cannot be overstated. He is considered to be the father of country music and his unique style of yodeling and singing influenced many musicians that followed him, including Hank Williams Sr., Bob Dylan, and Elvis Presley. He was one of the first musicians inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in 1961. His impact on popular music is still felt today, and his recordings continue to be enjoyed by fans around the world. Rogers tied the knot with Carrie Cecil Williamson and had two daughters, Carrie Anita Rogers, also known as Anita, and June Rebecca Rogers, who tragically passed away at the age of six months in 1923. According to the Asheville Citizen Times, Rogers relocated to Asheville, North Carolina by March 1927, where he resided at various locations, including the Western Hotel, a cabin behind Pisgah View Apartments, and a fire station. He held different jobs during this time, including working as a janitor, cab driver, and detective. Thanks to the earnings he garnered from his recordings during the peak of his career, Rogers was able to construct his dream house in Kerrville, Texas, which he selected partly for health reasons. Throughout his life, Rogers remained a man of the people, maintaining friendships with his former bandmates and pals. He was known for his amiable and upbeat personality and became legendary for his generosity to strangers, his penchant for giving free impromptu performances, and his willingness to mingle with his fans while on tour.